Hi, I want to review an article about cross-occurrence quantification analysis. The paper is from uh, Rick Dale. The following group of questions summarize the way of my critical review. First, what was the reason behind this research? What were the goals? What was the hypothesis? Ultimately, what were the major outcomes and how can we benefit from these results? When two people interact, they often adapt to each other and the streams of behavioral information exchange over time. This information flow may be in variety of forms, such as spoken language, eye movements, facial expression. And more importantly, some may lead behavioral levels to exhibit recurrent states. For example, uh, in a dialogue, two or more parties uh, adapt to each other by exchanging interactive cues, such as smiles, gestures, choice of words, and so on. And in order to understand the dynamics of these interactions and thus to uncover the extent of coupling between two individuals, we need to quantify how much recurrence is taking place at these levels. Therefore, we need methods and we need open source tools to apply these techniques. Cross-occurrence quantification analysis is widely used technique that helps to compare and contrast these dynamics. The article intended to describe this technique by providing key terms and terminology, such as difference between correlation or co-visitation, and the authors walked us through the building blocks of this method via two sample data sets based on eye moments and body moments. Their contributions are especially uh, on both theory and implementation part. On the left bottom part, the picture illustrates results of two experimental runs. Uh, we observed the beha behavior of two simple conversation parties, party, participants C and participant S, over 1,000 time steps. On the right-hand side, the top picture illustrates the correlation between these two participants. Left, hand, uh, left side of this box plot shows, our, shows us a relatively higher in, uh, incidence of behavioral event. Secondly, relative increase in the events occurrence in participant S is observed if it occurs in the participant C. On the last figure, uh, the lag on cross correlation functions between participants S and participant C are shown, but we need to know how the rate of the behavior co-varies with uh, that of another time series. We need to know how the rate of behavior co-varies and that of another time series. Uh, how one time series is revisiting states that the other time series has visited. Since the, since the time is limited, I won't be able to delineate all the details of the paper, but briefly, the technique follows these steps. Uh, first, we have one time series, which is illustrated at the top left image. The time series lagged by 10 and copied three times and overlaid by itself, that's related uh, that's illustrated uh, at the top right part. If we use three dimensions, uh, then it's possible to visualize this reconstructed phase uh, space. It's il illustrated in the bottom left. And it's possible to determine when recurrence is taking place by drawing a radius of a given size around parts of this reconstructed phase space. This is illustrated as a thick line on the bottom left part. The time indices of these recurrence plots can be used to construct the recurrence plots uh, on the bottom right. And finally, if we add two time indices, we can construct the recurrence plot, which is also demonstrated on the next slide. Uh, the study provi provided uh, well-formed terminology for such analysis needs, needs. For example, the recurrence rate, percentage uh, determinism, the threshold values, and their meanings are well described in this paper. The article also revealed that the recurrence plots are widely used and necessary level of functionality is also provided. So how does this paper uh, relate to our project? Uh, most important takeaway from this paper is that now I have a better understanding about cross-recurrence plots and not only about the terminology but also the, uh, it's about uh, the practical usage. Uh, and secondly, the article came with the complementary code that's written in our programming language uh, for our immediate use. Uh, the open source nature will give us the chance to extend the code for multiple participant settings. Therefore, the benefit from this article is not only the theoretical, but also it's uh, the practical use. Thank you.